Uh, we are still in this room, but we were nearly recording from a different room, which was very exciting. But oh. let's, before we get into that, say that it is the 21st of April, and it is day 32 of lockdown. Of lockdown. Uh, right. Uh, I wasn't. I should explain that probably. Yeah. It looked then like I was trying to look down Ellie's top, and while I'm not above that sort of behaviour, uh, on this occasion that's not what I was doing. It did look like that's well, what you were doing. I was just checking out your top, which is very dark, um, completely in this light. It is a black um, top. It's black. I wasn't sure if it was black or it just looked black in this light. No, it is a black top. All I was thinking was because I've uh, been messing around with your hair chalks mm -hmm. and. I've got a little bit of hair left on my on my chin that I've left just for the purposes of, of hair chalking. And then I've also, I've done, I don't know if you can see on camera. Oh, when you do that, they can. Yeah, I've done my eyebrows as well, for a bit of a giggle. <laughs> I've done a, sort of a green colour, because we're in lockdown and I'm not going out and facing the public, so why not look a bit silly, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter um, what I think of you. No, exactly, thank you. Um, <laughs> and I think... With the green, I look a little bit like an Oompa Loompa from the original uh, movies. I can see that, yeah. Yeah, not the not the remake with Johnny Depp, but the original one. Yeah, the orange ones with the green, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, oh, but if you'd combined that with your fake tan. I know, oh. well I was thinking that, oh. but I wasn't going to mention that because I thought I could, that could be a You've mentioned thing. the fake tan previously. Am I? Okay, alright, well fine. Well, those of you are keeping track with all the references. Well, I am, so, because I was so, here yeah, and I pay it. attention. I mean, yes, yeah, I so are you. No, I, I know, <laughs> but like, I don't expect everyone at home to be kind of... Yeah, um, I wasn't expecting them to remember, going, but like, I wasn't expecting you to... No, exactly, to... I wasn't expecting them to remember, so then if I did it later, it'd still be a... So, oh. Oh, well, well you're just going to have to pretend uh, you weren't anyway, expecting it. Anyway, the point is, I was looking at you in your black t-shirt, and me with my... Oh, yeah, so why were you looking down my top? Me, you in your black t-shirt, I'm also in a black t-shirt, and we've both got quite dark hair, yours is dyed, I've got dyed... I just think we look a lot like we listen to a lot of The Cure, <laughs> or My Chemical Romance, or whatever it is that goth kids uh. listen to now. You know, we look like a kind of slightly ageing goth oh, team. Oh, if I was gothing it up, I would have put not sparkly pink eyeshadow on. But now well, I wish I had gothed it up a little bit further. Mm. Well, that's okay. It was never, you know, a plan to, to goth up. <laughs> uh, and actually, got any goths watching, I'd be like, fuck off, mate. You look ridiculous. This is not how we look. We have green. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, that's not a goth hair. thing. No, it isn't at all. But it's just... It was more the sort of oh. the fact that we're both very pale skin sort of lead, leans into that. Don't be getting in on me and my porcelain skin. I've got you pretty and you. pale skin. I've just got very pink cheeks, like a a blush. Yeah, a, a, a nice little delicate blush. Because mm. I'm very self conscious about being on camera every day. Are you? No, I don't think you are. Uh, right, hi guys. Hello. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's what life's like with us. That's three minutes cool, isn't it? Um, <laughs> apparently. Uh, so yeah, uh, we are in a better mood today, as yes. I suspect you can probably tell. Uh, I ceiling. alluded to it by the fact that we nearly recorded this in another room in our house, which would have meant that two of us could be outside of this room. So close. We got so close to doing time. that, but we can't complain. We did both actually actually leave the room at the same time yes. and we had, we watched a television program Whole together one. downstairs what was it like half an hour 40 minutes 40 minutes 40 minutes 40 minutes well we ate uh and then we came in here well i'll step back a few stages anybody who's been watching the last few episodes knows that we've been trapped in this room with the terrible anaglypto wallpaper because uh we have a poppet who, uh poppet is a cat she's got a broken leg uh, and she's being put on sort of very strict, no jumping, no walking, no being an idiot uh, sort of rules. Uh, and we've been having to keep quite a close eye on her uh, just to make sure that she doesn't uh, pee on her dressing. Mm. She doesn't have a cast because she's got, um, she broke a leg quite nastily. Uh, and basically the back part of her ankle has come off. And so they've had to pin it back into place, which means Just that she can't put and... any pressure on her foot uh, so she can't there's jump no way up. of telling her that no she, she doesn't know in. and she's quite fussy um so uh yeah so she has to be in one small space uh but what has been happening is she has been lying in one small space and then when she's needed a wee or whatever mm. she has pissed all over her leg uh, and then that leg has needed to go straight to the vets to be uh redressed 
Um, so we've been keeping a so close we've... eye to try and make sure that doesn't happen because vets are expensive. <laughs> yes, they are. Um, um, and uh, insured and everything, but we've exceeded that because she, well, because she had an expensive break and uh, likes to piss on herself. Didn't I... know she had that kink. She's lying over there at the moment. I keep looking around to look at her. And then I briefly got the idea in my head, like if I whip my head back round fast enough, I could I could try and see myself still looking over there on the camera. But I don't think that's how that quick works. do you think your this camera? Well, how uh, quick do you think your reflexes are? I, I think are? I'm faster than I am. That's <laughs> what I think. I think I can. He does look slower than you. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Look at him with stupid eyebrows. I don't look like that normally. So, you don't look like that normally. That no, is true. Yeah. So there's that. <laughs> so. Uh, that's why um, we nearly got to eat downstairs is because we went to the vet with her today. Well, and we went to the vet, so it, that was nice. I had a bit of time to do some cooking as well while yeah, you were at the vet. Yeah, and, and uh, it was good. And we're basically, we were very excited about having the ability to do things separate of each other without one of us having to be in this bunger. It's um, like, it's, it's kind of made lockdown, I think, quite... Well, it's made it harder in some ways. Has it made it a bit claustrophobic? Well, what I was going to say, because like, obviously a lot yes. of people now are getting to the point, and we'll talk more on this later, but we're getting to the point for a lot of people where they're kind of almost reaching breaking point of like, oh God, I've been trapped in the house, I, you know, I can't go out, I can't go to the pub, I can't do things. And we were, for a while, kind of trapped in one room. You know, we were either sleeping or doing it, you know, we were taking it in terms of being here, so we weren't always in here, but when we weren't in here, we were usually walking the dog or cooking or doing some other kind of chore. Like there wasn't much just hanging out and we couldn't hang out together outside of this room. So actually our lives were even more constrained. But then what that does mean is just doing really basic lockdown stuff like sitting on the sofa and watching the telly and having a meal. Oh, We're suddenly delighted by this really basic stuff that other people oh, are kind of bored of. Oh, I was loving it. So I tell you guys, that. yeah, it really is. And I think, like, it's a real testament to the fact that, like, maybe, maybe, just maybe... We're a kind of couple that might withstand some quite tricky stuff because we sort of have handled this quite well. Yeah, Both well, of us have had, like, momentary... Momentary... I'm, I'm throwing shade at myself there. It's not been momentary. It's been repeated. We did a quiz prolonged. earlier and, and then um, got quite aggressive about some of the answers. I did not! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't! Look at this rage. <laughs> Look how angry. He said I got really angry and I, it? I, I didn't get angry. Defensive. This, is what she, this is what she gets like, guys. This is what I have to put up with. It's an absolute bloody nightmare. I didn't get angry. I got animated. You see? Shouting at me. Raising her voice. All right, green face. Mm, uh, <laughs> name calling. Abuse. You saw it. What was your point? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't um, know. Oh, what, what having I'm a good trying... day. I'm having fun. <laughs> we are having a good day. Is ultimately we, oh, we so so nearly filmed this downstairs, and that's exciting because she's doing well. The vet said good stuff. Um, she she still seems needs... to be able to f figure out how to wee and balance herself without weeing down her own leg, which is the, was the major concern. Yeah. So even though we don't want to leave her for too long at any one time because she's a bit trapped and, and cooped up in here uh, and, and kind of we're missing us when we're gone, but we can have brief spells where we can do sort of... Excuse me. Like, people have, have compared it to, like, having a newborn baby and it does feel a bit like, yeah, we can go and, and just go and be grown-ups before we have to go and hang out with the baby again. It's like... Yeah. I, well, I don't know if you sort of saying that makes sort of having a newborn baby sound a little bit easier than it is, and I don't I don't think I, that's well, not us saying. I think oh, this is exactly the same as having a newborn. I baby. I certainly think it swings and roundabouts <laughs> because having a newborn baby comes with its own set of challenges that we are not experiencing. Yeah, but you know there are things with a newborn baby you can just let it wee in its nappy and then just change that. And then that's not an issue. Yeah, it's not going to cost you 135 quid every time it pees in no, its nappy. And also, with a newborn baby, what you do have is, like, the best part of nine months to prepare. <laughs> like, even if you don't realise straight away, you kind of, you've got some time, right? And you can get the house set up in advance. We would have, I prepare, don't know. And you can make, make sure that you don't have other plans. And, and had yeah. a chair in it or something. Yes, well, that's it. With a baby, you can sit on your sofa cradling your baby yeah. and maybe you can't watch the TV because you don't want to wake the baby up or whatever but at least you're not on the floor like I, like I say I'm, I'm, 
I'm sure when I'm a mother myself, <laughs> I'll understand. Um, but, you we... know, parenting comes with its own set of challenges. Like, I was on the Mumsnet website what? the other where, day because I was Googling dumpling recipes and that's where it took me. And that's the place you go to? No, I was Googling and that was one of the links that came up. And I sort of went and it happened to be not Mumsnet. Oh, he got a little and flash on... in his eyes then that was like, no, I don't um, ask Mumsnet for dumpling recipes. I just happened Mumsnet. to find them on Mumsnet. On Mum's Net, some woman said... <laughs> some that, fucking mum. Some mum <laughs> said that you could make dumplings with plain flour. It doesn't have to be self-raising. You just use plain flour and butter and that would be fine. And it is not fine. They are very stodgy and underwhelming. So I understand that being a mum comes with its own set of challenges <laughs> and you eat shit dumplings. But... <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> that's about the first point. I think I'm having a break then. Uh, but also, <laughs> I couldn't maintain that level of rage. <laughs> oh, I don't care. <laughs> the dumplings was days ago. We had plenty of kebabs tonight. They were nice. It's all right. Good pea puree. And I had a fish burger earlier, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like these bits. <laughs> tell them about the polenta kebabs. <laughs> tell them about the polenta kebabs. They were nice. They were made of polenta. Uh, put some chilli oil on them. So they had a bit of heat to them. And we had them with like a nice pea puree that, you know, you wouldn't think would be very exciting, but actually quite nice. So... Um, yeah, I've realised I'm just not able to look at the camera. I know. Well, I'm, what else should I talk about <laughs> while you're gathering yourself? Oh, no, it's while, fine. Well, we mentioned that we were watching a TV show, yeah. didn't we? While yes. we had our food. <laughs> and the TV show that we watched. And if you... If, if those of you... What? We mentioned... Your eyes have been like, very bloodshot. <laughs> we mentioned, like, the night before last that we yeah. were going to watch this episode of this programme. Yes, but again, I'm not fussing too much about calling back to previous episodes... Like, let's, you know. How many people do you think are just discovering this? And, like, well, how many people are you this? thinking watch all of them? I, I don't understand. <laughs> I'm maybe either talking mentality. to my mum. Yes, yeah. so. <laughs> but the, po the point is, we don't need to kind of. Either either way, we'll just set up the. the idea. <laughs> whether or not. I reckon some people might have discovered this TV show, whether they've been watching the, the vlog or not, you know. I think other people might have seen it. So, Netflix has had quite a big documentary series <laughs> called The Tiger King. Uh, and what you may or may not know, if you've been enjoying that cultural phenomenon, is they released uh, a few days ago now a new episode uh, in which the star of Community, Joel McHale, uh, interviews and catches up with some of the people who appeared in the documentary. And I didn't realise when it was announced that that had happened that they had made it quite so quickly I just sort of thought maybe there was like a, a doc bit like I was expecting sort of unseen footage and that sort of nonsense but no this was literally just interviews put together uh, so it's all done social distancing so it's everybody on webcams talking to the camera um, and Joel uh, is it Joel McHale or is it Joel McHale Joel McHale Joel McHale uh, did a fabulous job of uh, uh, interviewing everybody um, Certain amount of shade thrown quite casually. I liked it. Yeah, it was um, quite funny. Quite yeah, witty. very funny. Um, but it was fascinating because there's so many. There are people in that that you did want to ask certain very big and quite specific questions to mm. that the documentary kind of left open, and he just asked them. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, yes, thank you. Uh, and yeah, I loved it. I was mm. so glad that it was made, and it it was a weird thing again because. I'm finding TV weird at the moment with social distancing and everybody being like, like on the news, every, everybody is sort of webcasting from their homes and there's yes. no guests on anything, rightly it's... so. They are still seeming to send um, sort of correspondents out to stand in front of important buildings to sort of say stuff you to can camera, do that which I don't... You can do one exercise a day, can't you? But I just don't, socializing. I don't feel like it's necessary. Just that you're allowed to stop for a rest as part of your exercise, so you just walk to the monument. Rest, yeah. rest in front of the camera and then walk to the front again, of 10 okay. Downing Street and stand yeah. there and talk to camera. Yeah, you'd think they could just... Well, maybe they could just green screen that, couldn't they? They really could. Yeah. They really could. Or you ask people to use their imaginations. You've seen 10 Downing Street. Just remember last time I stood here. It was like that. Just replay, like, any it. footage of Larry the Cat. 
in front of 10 Downing Street and I will be more uh, captivated. We will not follow the news if they just play footage of Larry the Cat, let's be honest. I will watch more of the news if yeah, they Yeah, but we won't it. absorb any of the information. Well, if they just put that yeah. while he's just sitting there, he's not doing anything exciting. You and know then we've they got say interesting cats. stuff. So if you want to see cats, we've got, you know, but he's, we've got he's a, a cat famous in cat. the room. <laughs> I didn't realise that you were so... I, I know you watched, like, Shallow. the Vanderpump show. The Vanderpump show. <laughs> that isn't what it's called, but I, it TV, should real, be. Real Housewives of uh, Bognor Regis and the other ones that you watch, but I didn't realise you were quite so consumed by celebrity that Larry the Cat... I love Larry the Cat. All right. What are you throwing shade at Larry the Cat? Nothing against Larry the Cat. I'm just saying if you want to see a cat, we've got there, there's a cat there. It's just out of shot. I've, I've been looking at that cat so much for the last few weeks. But it's a good cat to look at. It is a good cat to look at. She doesn't like having a cone on no. her head, but she does look cute. No cats like that cone. Yeah. You're enjoying that she looks a little bit like sort of, uh, like not a proper supervillain. No. But a bit like a sort of mega mind supervillain. Yeah, like sort or of like, a, a cartoon or something supervillain. Out of Mars attacks. So she's wearing this thing, and then so you just get this look, like, and then she'll just look at you and she'll give you a look. Just eyes above this kind of translucent cone <laughs> and there is a and there will be a moment a, where she sort of like the cone is like here and then she'll just like give a you a little cartoon super villain sort of a vibe yeah yeah she's mm. she's throwing shade quite beautifully with her eyes but we Lesson. were watching the tiger king that's yes. what we were discussing and i mean it is weird because it's quite a big budget i guess documentary and there's lots of different footage from that they've used and they've interviewed a bunch of people and they've obviously gone and, and filmed a bunch of stuff and then you have the follow-up you know, kind of coda episode to that series that they've filmed, uh, you know, very recently because of the phenomenon of it all. And yet, even though presumably they still have the kind of Netflix budget if they wanted to throw it, they can't. there's only so much you can do because of social distancing and everything. So you still have, like, Joel McHale interviewing on this kind of proper yeah, TV show I and he's still they've... wearing, like, earbuds. Yeah, I think they've sent his... everybody a set of good earbuds and oh. a good webcam. And... Which is great, but it's just... It's a and weird... they've told them, give us your jazziest background you can manage. They can't have them in a studio interview. Everyone's kind of just corresponding. And it, it's quite an odd thing to still be... I'm still trying to get used to stuff like that, I think. But... I don't think I'm going to get used to it in a while. Because, like, I, I mentioned previously watching the Graham Norton show and everybody was, um, like, hailing in from wherever they were. And... It's just like talk shows don't really work like well, it, that. It's I mean, it's weird. So, There's the just this thing... sense of like uh, the interaction between people not really being there. Like the thing that was beautiful about um, actually not so much Tiger King, but documentaries when there's um, somebody making the documentary. Louis Theroux is who I'm thinking of. And it's what mm. like the person who is outside of this, but is inside this space looking in at, at all this madness. And everybody else is just acting like normal. Like, it, when you then take that episode of uh, uh, the documentary and then you're interviewing people and it just feels very detached from what it was, but it also feels very detached from what it's trying to be. The whole thing just feels weird. But also, what I have I have enjoyed slash found strange is, is watching sort of people on proper programming. Like, for example, I, I saw correspondence on the pre-show of uh, WrestleMania 36 talking about the matches that were going to happen that evening and they're all like talking from their own homes the and some of them <laughs> I've just discovered sorry the Feli Wave plug that is keeping Pop It All Chill is actually quite hot if you lean against it good okay thank you <laughs> sorry. can I get back to my point now <laughs> yeah okay so I've just got minor burns oh are you okay <laughs> it's fine it's okay. I'm fine it just does well, get quite hot <laughs> Why I was going, ah, yeah, let go. But, the, but it, what is nice is you see people on these proper programs, and and sometimes you look at them and you're like, they're it, it's kind of a leveler, a great leveler, you know, because we're not, no one's going to put this on the BBC yet, but <laughs> but like sometimes you watch people Delusions on TV now, grandeur. you watch people Jack. on TV now, and they have a worse camera angle or like a worse image quality than we've got just doing this. I mean, not so much now that we're sat on the floor with the anaglypta behind us, but when we were sat on a sofa um, and had the camera set up nicely and it, you know, it actually looked better than when you see someone on the TV sort of looking, 
into a laptop and you've got the angle of under their chin and right up their Boris's nose. Boris's one post uh, COVID, he was doing it into a webcam that. and it, it was quite it was a little bit too close to his face. Um, so so I keep shifting my weight because I just get all pins and needles and uncomfortable uh, on the floor. So that's why I keep shifting about. I'm not re particularly restless, but I feel like I should explain that. But also, John McHale yeah. on this Tiger King episode. He, had to do, he did a really good, good job because also he had to shift very quickly between quite serious and then quite frivolous subjects. Yeah. Like he's talking literally about people shooting themselves in the head and then moments later he's got to kind of make a joke about a thing. Oh, this is a comment like, that we've had in from one of the Facebook fans that's got to ask you about this. And it's, yeah, it was a bit... Um, what did they say? No, that, but that's what I mean. He was going from talking about like. Oh, I uh, see. Sorry, I thought you said some friend had said something about this. No. Oh, okay. We don't have Facebook. <laughs> well, I, Facebook friends, we have. Yeah. Well wishers um, and supporters and. Uh, and bless yeah. you, whoever this is. But. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, but. But yeah, he did do a really good job. Because that's something I have noticed from doing this is we obviously sometimes have to say some quite serious stuff about coronavirus statistics, and then we have to shift into something more frivolous and then we'll have a kind of a rant about something so that's something i'm aware of doing this and i felt like he did a good job of it he did i know he really did because um <laughs> i i only know him from community uh, so i just sort of assumed he was an actor slash possibly comedian who's gone into an acting role but i thought he was an actor oh. i thought he was an actor playing a pretty boy role yes is, is how i interpreted him but he actually him. is that pretty in real life as it sounds uh, i know he acts very pretty and he is very pretty looks very good in um, lockdown it does got a little salt and pepper chin going on there oh. i quite like it um so yeah deal with that uh, you've got green eyebrows. So. I have, so... <laughs> he can't compete with that. He no. doesn't have a job. Yeah, exactly. I win, Joel. Joel. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Deeply unnecessary. He's done uh, nothing to us. No, I love him. But... Um, <laughs> also... Anyway. Uh, on the subject of Tiger King, though. Yeah. If, if you are a fan of the Tiger King and you want more, I've been listening on my dog walks uh when i go out daily i've been listening to a podcast uh called the uh, I, I think it it's just was called... made before tiger King. it was it? it was made it came out like i think last year or maybe the year before and it's just called joe exotic and it's a six part uh podcast series but then there's some extra bonus episodes with more extensive interviews with some of the people from the show and it's i mean it covers a lot of the same it's basically telling the same story so it covers a lot of the same ground about Joe and Carol Baskin and then Jeff Loeb, but he, uh, it, it's, you know, from a slightly different perspective and it has some slightly different information. Like, for example, the, the songs that he records on the documentary, it goes into a bit more detail about whether or not he wrote or sang on them. I mean, no spoilers, but, and also, uh, is it, what's, what's the, oh, I was just amused by you shaking your head and the guy's name's gone out of my... Which guy? The guy who did, made the reality TV. Oh. Kirk. Uh, something Kirkham. Kirkham? Uh, Jeff? Je no. No, it's not Jeff. Jack? Jim? Anyway, so the guy <laughs> from the documentary, the guy who turns, to help, who turns up to help Joe make his own um, like TV show and to put out on the internet, and who also... Excuse me. Have designs on kind of making a reality show about Joe, and he's the one who films him sitting on the throne and, and gives him kind of the name the Tiger King, which Joe gets very excited about this, and he's repeatedly watching. The, anyway, the guy who's making that TV show actually talks on the podcast a bit more about what happens when he takes his footage to TV studios and tries to pitch that show and, and that kind of yeah. thing. So that's the sort of thing where. Yeah, if you can't get enough of the Tiger King, there's just a bit more information. It is really and, interesting. Uh, extra yeah. little snippets that you've told me. Mm. Um, uh, so I think it, it should, it would be worth a listen. One thing that I thought was very strikingly missing from the Tiger King after this all happened episode that we've just watched tonight that's just been released on Netflix is the conspicuous absence of Carol Baskin. Uh, she's not on it. 
No. Uh, they've only really spoken to people that were in and around Joe Exotic and I mean, his uh, zoo. Um, she is definitely the person that you'd want to kind of. Oh, I want to have a chat. Ideally, more um, more what she's got to say. I suspect she has a lot of lawyers telling her not to say anything to anyone right now, uh, because apparently, and she I don't. Her husband. Uh, well, apparently, apparently she, uh, they have tiger, apparently. reopened the case into her Ooh. husband um it Sighting. was uh closed uh as <clears throat> a, a missing presumed dead yeah. and i think there was a five-year prerequisite at which point you can like pay out on a and he was missing long enough nothing suspicious enough so that they presume dead done Apparently they've reopened that investigation uh, to look a little bit more closely into what happened to Carol Baskin's husband. So I suspect that's why Carol Baskin is not having a chat with too many people right now. Um, but I would like to have a chat with Carol Baskin. Yeah, because um, we think she broke our cat's leg. I don't actually think that. Fuck Carol Baskin. But no. I wouldn't put it past her. <laughs> no. I, Seems, I don't think she'd break any cat's legs. Like I think it, she actually likes cats. It seems quite like it'd be inconvenient for her to yeah. get all <laughs> the way to Newport weird. in South Wales to do that. Um, it would have been a long no, way to come just to be spiteful. I was just mucking about. Were you? Yeah. I didn't get that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Trump supporters are acting up, aren't they? Oh, oh right. Trump okay. <laughs> that was a beautiful segue. Well done, lad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. There is a thing that I've been wanting to talk about. I wanted to talk about it yesterday, um, ran out of time, and so now is as good a time as any. Right, there are some people, and this is happening here, uh, but it's also happening across the pond. Uh, now, the US, we were, for a little while, doing the worst globally when it comes to the way we were dealing with coronavirus. Yeah. And then Trump, number one, we're Trump number one. Oh, set in. We're number two now. We're, I think, we're like number four or five globally. But basically, the states are doing terribly when it comes to this, and we're not doing great, but we're not doing the worst. We're doing the worst in Europe. Ah, uh, but that doesn't even count because we're um, not in Europe anymore. Ha, no. Suck on that, Europe. <laughs> we're not in your league. Um, <laughs> we're doing terribly without you, actually. So yeah. Ha. Yeah, that'll teach you. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, Sorry, America Europe. I'm is. I'm just lashing out because I miss you. Do I think I'm... I've still got feels for you, oh, Europe? Man. It's just like just sending texts in the middle of like, you up. I miss you. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so we thought we feeling European might delete later. Is that a thing? <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. It should be a thing. Mm. Uh, we were thought we were doing badly. We were doing badly. We are doing badly. It's a catastrophe. But America is doing worse. Um, it's not surprising. Trump's at the helm. And Trump has been having a breakdown on television repeatedly and at length about this. Uh, and he keeps saying very conflicting bullshit nonsense about all of this. Um, one of the things that seems to be an upsurge based on his very mixed message uh First Amendment, Second Amendment, do what you like sort of bullshit message is that a big upsurge in Trump supporters and probably people who don't support Trump but who are also mental um, have been protesting lockdown in the United States. Um, what a bunch of dicks. They have been going out in crowds uh, to prove that they have the right, it's a free country to do what they want and they're not going to be told what to do, etc, etc. It's mental. We don't need to tell you that it's mental. I would recommend just typing into a little Google search anti-lockdown protesters USA because it's insane. There are people going out with uh, banners saying, I need a haircut, I need a job. And you're like, okay, right? <laughs> and those two things have equal weight in my eyes. Uh, but the ultimate thing that I think I take away from all of this nonsense is all of those people, every single uh, anti-lockdown protester in the USA is no longer allowed to call themselves pro-life if they are flouting lockdown rules because of their right to go out and about. Yeah, you have a right to go out and about, fine. You know that going out and about might mean that you infect other people and they might die 
So if you continue to go out and about when you know that you shouldn't, you are not ever, ever allowed to throw any shade on somebody who has an abortion, thinks about has an abortion, and you're not allowed to call yourself pro-life. Because you are not pro-life, you are pro-you. And you can fuck right off. Um, I'm mm. so pissed off that people are doing this. There's a beautiful badass clip of um, a, a group of nurses on a sort of zebra crosswalk, but a zebra crossing, just standing and not letting people get to the anti-lockdown protests. And they're just standing there in their scrubs with their masks on and just arms crossed, not letting people pass. And it's one of the most badass things I've seen. And it's beautiful. And there's like angry Trump supporters shouting out of the windows going, this is a free country. And they're just going, there's uh, a, it's beautiful, but this whole thing is bullshit, and we've got our priorities wrong. There's a picture of someone protesting lockdown whilst wearing, saying like it's safe to go out whilst wearing like a gas mask. And my friend Richard James is very funny. This is his observation, but he said this guy protesting lockdown, saying the disease isn't a thing and it's safe to go out whilst dressed like a discount Darth Vader is now my current go-to reference for cognitive dissonance. I like, like that. Because why are you going are you out a in mask? a gas mask? If it's safe, then just take the gas mask. Man, we'll all, I like we'll all that. breathe on you, you prick. <laughs> Weird threat, isn't it? We're all going to breathe of, yeah. on you, you prick. Yeah. <laughs> We've run out of time. Yeah, we've so, yeah, we got to end it there. All right. We'll Bye guys, we're going to breathe on you, you pricks. Bye pricks, <laughs> going to breathe on you. Bye. Bye.